Today, the Russian sectivity shows no signs of abating, and there are significant challenges with assistance for Ukraine. Overall, despite some countries sincerely attempting to aid Ukraine and even supplying more weapons than before, overall military support has still significantly declined. During the full-scale war, Denmark allocated military aid to Ukraine, the cost of which is more than its defense budget. But in general, military aid to Ukraine in 2023 fell by 40% compared to 2022. And a 40% decrease means nearly half less weaponry is coming in. Meanwhile, Russia on the contrary has doubled its troops and equipment along the front line. Therefore, unfortunately, it's still too early to talk about liberating the occupied territories. But today, it's already certain that due to the decrease in assistance, Ukraine will be raising taxes. Ukraine is considering a plan, including expanded domestic bond sales, tax hikes and spending cuts, to plug a hole in its budget in a bid to secure money from the International Monetary Fund if crucial U.S. aid remains blocked. Ukrainian officials intend to propose the plan to the IMF during a staff visit to Kiev next week, according to people familiar with the matter, who asked not to be identified discussing private deliberations. The measures are needed to assure the IMF that Ukraine can service its debts in case allies fail to provide aid, a condition for its $15.6 billion loan program. The IMF staff, led by the fund's Ukraine mission chief Gavin Gray, will visit Kiev for three days starting February 12, prior to official talks on Ukraine in neighboring Poland, the people said. The visit comes ahead of the IMF's review of the loan program, which will start later this month and would unlock a $900 million tranche of aid. Overall, one thing can be said here. There are many new taxes ahead to continue holding the defense and prevent the Russians from advancing further into Ukrainian territory. Now, let's briefly look at the situation along the front line, starting right away with the Kupinsk direction. Here, the occupiers conducted six assaults on Sinkivka, but the Ukrainian forces managed to repel all attacks and the front line remains unchanged. In the area of Tabayivka, all attacks we are unsuccessful, but Shalon continues along the entire front line. So it's reported that for the first time, strikes with guided aerial bombs and cluster munitions have been reported in Kupiansk. The day before, Kupiansk was hit for the first time by KABs with cluster charges. This increases the area of impact and poses an even greater threat to civilians. That is why we are bringing up the issue of forced evacuation of families with children to the Regional Defense Council, Sini Hubov said. In the direction of Svatova, the occupiers periodically shelled frontline villages, but no offensive actions are recorded and the frontline remains unchanged. In the direction of Krimina, the occupiers conducted one assault operation on the village of Terni within a day, so which the Ukrainian armed forces successfully repelled. Shalin also continues in large quantities, but the Russians have no success and the front line remains unchanged. In the Siversk direction, the situation remains unchanged. All attacks in the area of the village of Verkhnyokaminsk have been unsuccessful and now, as before, only Shalin is reported. In the Bakhmut direction, the Russians conducted three attacks within a day in the areas of Andreevka, while tactical battles are observed near Bogdanivka and Ivanivka. The occupiers still cannot fully take control of these villages because the Ukrainian forces actively destroy them with after the drones. So the front line remains unchanged over the day. In the Avdiivka direction. The archivists conducted 21 attacks within a day. As seen, there is again a significant intensification here. Battles are ongoing in the areas of Brdychi, Tonenka, Peromaiska and Nevelska. However, 
they still haven't achieved success and the front line remains unchanged. Their official statement from the FDFK direction sounds as follows. The Russians partially control Burdekai and Tonenk, but the advance of the enemy has been stopped, the armed forces. Of Ukraine near Avdiivka, the Russian occupiers partially control the villages of Burdekai and Tonenk. At the same time, the defense forces managed to stop the enemy's advance in this area of the front, said Dmitro Lykovy, spokesman for the Tavria Joint Task Force. Today, the first reports also emerged uh, regarding the construction of defensive lines on the Avdivka direction. In the Donetsk region, Ukrainian military engineers are building defensive lines. How the work continues, the news agency of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine Army Inform showed. The military is working on the construction of a platoon stronghold on the line of defense of the operational zone of one of the operational tactical groups. The exact location of the construction is not disclosed for security reasons. The publication said that given the nature and realities of modern warfare, the trenches are made wider and higher so that you can pass through the equipment, carry the wounded on a stretcher, etc. In the Marinka direction. The occupiers have slightly reduced the activity with 16 attacks recorded in the past day. The main battles are taking place in the areas of Georgievka and Novomikhailovka. Near Krasnohorivka and the village of Pabieda, there is no new activity reported today. Official confirmation of the partial capture of Novomikhailovka hasn't been provided, although the Ukrainian armed forces have been reporting for several days that the Russians control approximately 40 or 45 percent of the settlement. So we are waiting to see how the situation develops further. However, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to eliminate the occupiers here as the task is to stabilize the front line as much as possible. So to achieve this, reinforcements have been sent by Sirsky and commanders have been replaced. Therefore, there is a probability that the Russians will not succeed here anymore. In the Vuhlidar direction, the occupiers continue shelling along the entire front line. So today there have been new attempts to advance in the area of Urajaina. However, the Ukrainian armed forces continue to hold their defense successfully. Therefore, the front line remains unchanged, although the fighting continues. In the Zaporizhia direction, the situation remains unchanged. The occupiers continue shelling front line settlements. Strikes are directed towards the rear, but there are no new offensive actions. So it seems uh, they are gathering more reserves and developing new plans for clearing the liberated foothold. So we are still waiting to see how events will unfold. In the Kherson direction, the occupiers continue to shell the right bank and the area near the village of Krinke on the left bank. There are also new attempts by the Russians to push the Ukrainian armed forces of the foothold. But their success is on the side of the Ukrainian armed forces. In the Kherson direction in the area of Krenki. Today, after a long break, there were two assaults, mopping up operations on Teplinskoy, of the enemy's bridgehead in the village of Krenki. Groups from the 26th Motorized Rifle Regiment and the 328th Airborne Assault Regiment took part in the assaults. There are losses, but not big compared to other days. And Russian soldiers are beginning to reveal the truth about how the assault on Krenki are taking place.
а потом дать в бейсбол. Либо сам участвую, либо парни относят к машину, которая опять же едет под дикими рисками, под дикими минометными обстрелами, выезжает отсюда с рынок. Парни, кто отвозит, рискует очень сильно. Overall, we'll wait and see how events unfold. So today the general staff confirmed the destruction of the Sergei Court of Sheep by a strike on Crimea. So the explosion was so powerful that the ship was destroyed beyond repair. And the fate of the crew is being clarified. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.